What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. So if you've been tracking recruiting in college football as a whole recently, you have definitely taken notice of Texas A&M and what they have been building under Jimbo Fisher. And to me, Texas A&M is going all the way in. They have a complete monetary buy-in from their boosters and their administration. They are pushing all their chips to the middle of the table at this point to win now or at least soon. So let's discuss why I think Texas A&M is in a show-me state as a program that isn't quite win now, but it's almost that. So let's begin with what Jimbo has done in his time at Texas A&M since he got there. He's 34-14 and at A&M with his best season being a 9-1 and season in the 2020 COVID year. Uh, and he's never won his division and therefore never won his conference. His best bowl win has been an Orange Bowl win that came from that 2020 COVID season where A&M finished fourth overall in the final AP rankings. Overall, not a bad resume by any means, but certainly not good enough for what Texas A&M has been you know, hoping for and what they've been expecting for, uh, for him to produce there with all the money that they gave him on his huge contract. But this past season, despite going just 8-4 and four and opting out of their bowl game, Texas A&M finally beat Alabama, and Jimbo became the first Nick Saban assistant to actually beat him, which, you know, then Kirby Smart did later on in the national championship. But Jimbo was the first. Unfortunately, though, going 8-4 and four still isn't a very inspiring performance for Texas A&M, and in some ways it kind of wasted that Alabama win, and, and you know, and as far as on-the-field impact goes, yeah, you beat Alabama, but you still just went 8-4. and four. I mean, does that really count as a successful season? I don't know. Uh, however, A&M did just come out of nowhere for the most part and sign the best recruiting class in college football history, and not by a little bit either. They signed seven five-stars and 19 four-stars, which is just absolutely insane. They hauled in an absurd defensive lineman class as well. Absolutely insane recruiting class that A&M and Jimbo Fisher put together. Now, there have been a lot of allegations going around about how they basically bought this class with some $30 million budget and things like that, and I don't think that's true, but I also don't believe what Jimbo says when he says the NIL had nothing to do with this class either. NIL definitely played a part in this class, but it wasn't the entire reason for it either, like a lot of people keep trying to say. These, these, you know, There are a lot of these people out there also that are joking about how Texas A&M is just going to have all these guys transfer. They're going to fill up the transfer portal with all these talented guys because there's no way they're going to be able to keep them and things like that. But to me, there is a little bit of merit to that. It's just such a loser's mentality to think about things that way. If they do genuinely think about it that way and they aren't just trolling, which I think they really are just trolling, to be honest. But assuming, you know, taking them at face value there, assuming they're being serious, it's a real bad, it's a loser's mentality all the way through. It's a terrible mentality to have. If that really, you know, is the case that everybody that they sign, all these five stars are just going to transfer, then why bother recruiting at a high level at all? If any, if everybody's just going to leave anyway, why even bother recruiting at that point? Clearly, though, it's worked out for Alabama and Georgia to recruit at a high level, even if both programs continue to lose players to the portal all the time. Texas A&M may not lose anybody from this class at all. And then those people, I mean, what are you going to say to that then? And then they may lose 10 of them. But it doesn't really matter or detract from this class in any way because it's still a huge accomplishment. Landing this level of a class is a major win for any program, and it should be celebrated. People should be happy about it. And anybody who's saying things like, oh, well, they'll all just transfer out anyway, has a loser's mentality when it comes to the sport. Texas A&M did what they were supposed to do, and they did it better than anybody else did this year. That's all there really is to it. Anybody who's going to try to detract from that by saying things like, oh, you just bought the class, or oh, they're going to transfer, they're just upset that whatever school they pull for didn't do this. You know, If the roles were reversed, they'd be the exact same as all the A&M fans are about it right now. So to me, just a bad mentality for those people to have. Most of them are just being trolls. Regardless of all that, though, Jimbo got this class, and it's obviously a great thing for AM and for him going forward. He has openly said that some of his play calling has been limited by his personnel in the past, and with this signing class, that's no longer an issue, or at least it shouldn't be an issue, and if it is, then you have to look at Jimbo more, not his, not his players so much. Um, it must be said, though, these guys are still just incoming freshmen. Even though a lot of them are going to be early enrollees, they can't be counted on to carry your team just yet. 
at least not as a whole. I mean, some freshmen come in ready to play, and, you know, they perform outstanding and, you know, take over college football, but that's not most of them, and it's certainly not something you can rely on these guys doing heading into next season just yet, at least until you see it from them on the actual field in college football. Most guys, it takes a while, you know, at least till the end of their freshman season. Most of them a lot more than that, even for your five-star type guys. Now, if you just give it a year or even two years, that's when you really start to see the dividends of a class like this start to fully pay off. Because these guys are just freshmen, that's why I don't have Texas A&M in a win-now mode like a lot of other people do. A lot of people are saying that if Jimbo doesn't you know, win the division this year, then it's a, it's a failure of a season and things like that. I'm not going to go that far because his huge recruiting class is just in their freshman seasons. They don't have to win the SEC this year for it to be considered a success. However, time is running out on Jimbo to get things done down there, and this year needs to be a 10-win type of season, regardless of how young that talent is. He's been there for years now. He can't use any excuses about his roster, because he's the one who built it at this point. And I'm not saying he has to go 12-0 and beat Bama by 20 and win the national title or anything like that, but 8-4 and four to me would also be a major disappointment for Texas A&M next season because it shows no sign of year-over-year improvement despite the fact that he has this influx of talent and he's, in, you know, he's been at the program for years now. He has his entire own staff. He has his entire own roster. He has no excuse to not succeed heading into next season. And so I think he really does need to step it up heading into next year as far as the win total goes. I'm just not ready to say it's complete win or bust type of thing. But why do I say a and going all in? I say that because the program buy-in, both through you know support and also in your monetary stuff and your money, is as high as you can get right now. Jimbo has been given everything he's been asking for, and there is no reason that he can't get it done at this point. He's a veteran coach who's won a title before at Florida State. He's been here at A&M for a few years now. He clearly has as big of a budget as anybody could ever want for his entire staff, for his facilities, for recruiting. And I don't even mean NIL with the recruiting thing. I mean paying for planes to go visit prospects, paying for all your travel and your lodging and things like that paying to host these big recruits he has as big of a budget as you could hope for with things like that with all of that support from the university and from the fans and the recruiting success that he's just been putting together if Jimbo doesn't find a way to win the west and likely the conference within the next three maybe four years then I think you'd hear some legitimate hot seat talk building up around him not to say that he would be a bad coach by any means, even if he didn't achieve at that level. He's clearly one of the best coaches around. He's won a national champion. He is a proven good head coach. But clearly, Texas A&M is committing to football in a way that demands postseason success. He can't just go 8-4 and four with a good upset win against Alabama and A&M be happy with that at this point. In my opinion, he gets one or two years more as a pass where if he goes 8-4, and 9-3, and three, there's not going to be any real hot seat talk that's real yet. You'll hear a little bit of it on the fringe, but in the mainstream, you're not going to see too much of it just yet. But if you go you know, three, four years without any year-over-year improvement like that, Jimbo will be on the hot seat at that point. He has to be able to produce. You know, They're going to want to see what he can do with this insane talent that he just signed, if he can keep them around. And, and what he can bring with him on the field. So like I said, I think that gives him a little bit of a pass there for the next year or so. But overall, he really doesn't have much longer. And I'm not going to predict, or and I'm not even trying to predict, that he's not going to succeed and that he's going to run into this trouble and he's going to be on the hot seat. I'm not saying that that's what's going to happen. I'm saying that if he doesn't succeed soon, and I mean like very soon, then that talk will begin and he, his job will start to be in a little bit of danger in my opinion. Um, we're seeing a shift, in my opinion, in the Texas A&M program right now. They're going from a program who has been saying that they're all in on football, but they really weren't with how they spent money and how they invested into it. But now they are all in on football as a program. They are fully invested into it. They're giving Jimbo, like I said, everything he could ask for. And at that point, it all comes down to the coach. You know, if, if, if everybody else around him is contributing everything they can to making this team a winner and they're still not a winner, you, you have to look at the coach at that point. You know, your, your program going all in isn't just all good things from a coach's perspective, at least. It's great in the aspect that you get anything you want, 
You, you know, anything you could ever ask for, they'll provide it for you. You get your own staff that you want. You get every, literally everything that you could ask for, Texas and them. They're providing him. So it's great in that aspect. But that also means, like I said, if you're not winning at the highest level then and everything around you is providing you things at the highest level, then the only person to blame is you as the head coach then. And that's a lot of pressure. A lot of coaches aren't ready for A lot of coaches don't want a lot of responsibility on their plates. Now, I think Jimbo is the kind of guy who would love that, who loves that pressure and would love that kind of responsibility and expectation around him. But some coaches aren't. Jimbo doesn't seem like that kind of guy to me. He seems like he would absolutely love that. I think Jimbo is up to the task for that. But it's an interesting thing to watch. The issue that a and is going to run into, though, is that they play in the SEC West. I mean, any given season, you could have four of the ten best teams in the country in your own division. I mean, just in the West. That doesn't even mention the East, where you have to deal with teams like Georgia at the very least, not to mention if you know Florida or Tennessee or South Carolina, anybody else in the East really gets things going. You still have Georgia at the very least over there, in addition to the entire West. And then we'll have to take their talent that they're recruiting, develop it to the highest level while recruiting at the highest level, and also coach at the highest level and you know an equal level to the best other schools in the country right now. And they have to do that every single week if they want to get to the top, which to be fair, that's true of a lot of schools around the country. But saying that is one thing and doing it is another one entirely. From this point going forward, though, I think you have to see Texas A&M as a program where it is a championship or bust in a lot of ways. Maybe not this season exactly, but certainly in the you know the next season and the ones beyond that, as the pressure really begins to mount on Jimbo Fisher and A&M as a program going forward, you're going to really start to see, if they aren't succeeding, lots of hot, you know, hot seat talk, lots of high expectations. And if they are succeeding then it's going to do the same thing. It just won't be the hot seat stuff. The expectations will continue to go through the roof, though, as everybody, you know, they look into it. You have everything you could ever want at AM and you're succeeding. You have to just keep it up. They're going to expect you to be the next Nick Saban, even if there isn't one of those out there. That's what people are going to expect from you. Anyway, with all that being said, that'll do it for this video. Let me know down below what you guys think about Texas a and and Jimbo Fisher as a whole going forward, your thoughts on the new recruiting classes and the expectations around the entire program right now and in the future. Also, if you've made it this far in the video, go ahead and leave a like as it helps the channel out tremendously. Subscribe for more college football content in the future as I will continue to upload very regularly. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all next time.